Amen. So today is the elevation of the Holy Cross uh, that our Lord was crucified on. And as I told the children, the day that the cross was found, it was raised up on a high place repeatedly uh, so that people could see it and reverence it. And on uh, this feast day, churches throughout the world raise the cross uh, as well. And um, as on all feast days of the church, our celebration should just not be an external one. Of course, there is a ritual, a ritualistic celebration. There's certain things we do, certain movements, and so forth. But it's not just a, a choreographed dance that we're doing here. It's uh, symbolic of something that should be going on spiritually in our hearts. We should be raising the cross of Christ in our hearts today. And uh, we can only really do that if we take the time to sort of reflect uh, on what the cross means to us. I don't know if you've ever done that. And I don't know very much. You sit there and think, what does the cross mean? How do I use it? What are the blessings that it brings to me? What does it represent in terms of my struggle in this life? Those kinds of things. And uh, we really need to resolve then to, to use the cross for the purpose that it was intended for followers of Christ. And that is to nail our passions on them uh, and crucify them so that we can carry on without a burden. That's not a very fun thing to talk about on a feast day. You know, uh, this idea of nailing passions on the cross and crucifying them. But it's something that's so essential to the Christian faith that according to the Apostle Paul in his letters to the Galatians, he says that it is only those who crucify the flesh with its passions who truly belong to Jesus Christ. And so having raised this cross in ourselves, you know, Christians hold up and are to sort of exalt it every day of their life, to raise it up repeatedly when the need arises. And that's why this feast day is a strict fast feast day. There's only a few feast days uh, in our church liturgical year that are strict fasting no matter what day they fall on, even if it's a Sunday. And this is one of them. I mean, yes, it's a celebration. We celebrate the day that they found the cross of Christ. But it's also on this day that we take uh, the opportunity to remember the sacrifice that the Lord made for us. And also to question whether we're really using the cross for our benefit as Christ would want us to. And you know, when the Lord was taken down from the cross, as I explained to the children, it remained on Bogotha for a time, and then it was thrown in the trash pit, uh, where the instruments of, of execution usually are thrown together with the, the other refugees and so forth. And not long, uh, in the year 70 AD then, when Rome ransacked Jerusalem, uh, that pit where they threw the cross in was filled in, covered over, and of course they erected on with uh, that uh, idol um, temple to the goddess Venus. And I didn't want to tell the kids this, you know, but Venus is the pig goddess of fornication and all manner of lusts, you know. And um, when we don't raise the cross of Christ in our hearts and use it to nail our passions on, we sort of cover it over as well. We cover it over with worldly refuse. You know, in the place where the cross should be elevated in our lives, we bury it under worldly idols, and instead raise in its place a monument to our own self-satisfaction, our own passions, or our desires. That's what happens if we don't raise the cross in our hearts repeatedly. And again, these are kind of somber things to think about on feast day, but because of Christ's resurrection, we never consider the cross Part of the life that it brings. You know, and we're reminded of one of the great paradoxes of our faith. The more we try to save our lives from our cross, the more we lose them. The more we lose our lives on the cross for Christ, the more we
we gained them. So in a certain sense, the cross is our friend. It's a conduit of grace for us. It's a vehicle that will transport us to the heavenly kingdom. I'll leave you with a story I heard once. I remember complaining to my father confessor about something once. Going on and on and on and on about all the terrible my life is and so forth. It wasn't here, by the way. I love my life here. <laughs> way back in the early part of my Christian life. Then he listened and then he told me a story. He said, one day, there was a man who had a dream. And he was in a large group of people. And they were walking down this road. And all of them were carrying their cross. Big, rugged, heavy crosses. And they were carrying it. And they were walking. And the person was in this group and he was walking. And he said, Lord, can't you help me a little bit? Can't you lighten my load just a tad? Can't you just take off a little bit of the cross? And the Lord said, Okay. The demon cut off a chunk of the cross. And I said, oh, this is better. Thank you, Lord. And he starts walking. And then after a few more miles, it starts getting heavy again. He says, Lord, I can't do this. This is, this is too heavy for me. Please, just take a little bit more off my cross. And the Lord said, okay. So he chops some more off. And this happened repeatedly a few more times. And so he had a nice light cross that he was walking down the road with all of his companions there. But then one day, in the middle of the road, was a huge chasm, like a cliff, a drop off. And on the other side of the chasm, the road went on, but for a short period before, it led to the beautiful, shiny gates of the brilliant heavenly kingdom. And one by one, the people came up to that chasm. And they laid their cross down on it and they walked across the cross, picked it up, and continued on right to the gates of the heavenly kingdom. But the man who had the short cross was not able to continue on because he couldn't reach. Our crosses are just vehicles for us. Those things about ourselves that we really have to work on in life. Maybe a little selfishness here. Maybe a little insecurity over there. Maybe a little greed over here. We take these things and we try to deny ourselves then, as Christ tells us. That's our promise. And we should do this because the life that awaits for us someday, we're going to be glad we shouldered that cross because it's going to be the very bridge that we walk across to the kingdom. And so I pray that the Lord remind us when we feel the weight of our cross, the blessing that it will bring to us. Remind us that nothing in our lives happens outside His love for us, and to always keep in front of us Him and His heavenly kingdom. So we carry across.